Bits in the Tank. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bits in the Tank. Oh my god, we missed you. It's a new year. The third podcast in the third month of 2021, and god damn it, this one is special. Um, I'll start out by saying I am Carly. Adam. I'm Ari. Hello, I'm Haley. I'm Nadisha. My name's Sam. And you know all of us, so that seems pretty normal, but we in fact have some special new baby guppies that just jumped in the bowl for your comedy enjoyment. We're so excited for their debut. Um, guys, please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Gregory. Hey, I'm Hannah McKegg. Santo. Uh, I'm Mary. And I'm Steven. <laughs> wow, guys. They sound amazing. Just wait till they start doing comedy. You guys are going to laugh your little asses <laughs> off while you're, I don't know, washing your dishes and this is on Spotify. I'm so effing happy for you. But in, in um, Bits in the Tank, old classic format, we're just going to get started off for this guppy show with having some of the guppies throw some bits in the tank. Do you guys have anything on your mind, anything you want to talk about, anything you think people who listen to the fish fishbowl podcast need to know i got a i got a, a bit i'd like to pick Hannah santa what's up <laughs> here's the thing i started <sighs> working out it's not Ugh. something that i do right mm -hmm. <laughs> nope there's something that i'm a little confused about and i want to get your guys's take on it and i just want to discuss <laughs> I would love engaging <laughs> engaging your core what <laughs> I, what what does it mean chloe ting keeps telling me to engage my core and i'm assuming it means my abs because that seems like it's the core of my body right but all i can feel are my legs burning while i'm doing <laughs> ab workouts and then let me think about doing gym in middle school and in high school and they didn't teach me anything because i still don't know what a core means that's all okay let me step in and say my knowledge of engaging your core and this has been i guess self-taught as you would say um <laughs> but i've kind of you know the feeling is like you're trying to poop you know i could be wrong what <laughs> core are you in you might <laughs> engage Even what? Steven's out here doing <laughs> you might engage their core differently, but I just like squeeze down there, no. and I thought that was my core. No, I, I kind of okay. want Adam to speak on this because <laughs> let me tell you, Adam. If you've never seen Adam, he's a gorgeous man. But I like must say, Adam, especially when we went to this like lake house one one week. He like had these abs, and we were all like, "Adam, working out, working out." I knew they're all gone. He gets like Honey, the ribs, <laughs> Adam, but you no know that. <laughs> Let me tell you, Adam got super drunk, and he was like messy as we all are. But he still looked like he was in like a goddamn Joji music video while he was like sweating <laughs> in the bathroom. I was like, if Abercrombie, I'm drunk, I look Adam. like I look like an elephant being drowned. So, like, Adam <laughs> is the only one that knows about abs in this group. I feel. Um, yeah. So Adam, what's the your key secret? thing. The, okay, I don't know if y'all know about the ab rollers, but it's just this wheel with handles on it. And you just, <laughs> you get on your knees and you push forward with the wheel and you try to get your stomach as close to the ground as possible without touching it. Oh. If you and guys it does it, it, like, it shreds me immediately. At all times. Use, <laughs> it's that. Use the ab rollers. Because <laughs> that will, that'll let you see God. It hurts, <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> um yeah but um i look like santa claus right now i haven't worked out in a while oh no, come on now but who doesn't like santa claus exactly <laughs> that's so I'm my true. cuddly stage speaking of santa oh. claus my tiktok is showing me that it's only 40 weeks until christmas and i am very excited <laughs> what <laughs> wait that's a long time relatively a long time. compared to 52 <laughs> that's i'm i'm excited too but we still got fourth of july <laughs> Let's well, not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, well, I'm sorry, that was a little Scrooge of me. <laughs> 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 
what is your guys' <laughs> verdict on New Year's Eve slash day? Because a lot of people love shit it. on that holiday. A lot of people love it. I want to know what you think. I, I think really it's the greatest it. holiday. It's so fun. I think New Year's is only hype if the whole goal at the end of the night is to not remember it, you know? Yes. Yeah. Mm. I've always found it kind of magical, but I think, I don't know, I met my best friend on New Year's, oh. so we we usually do fun stuff for it, and it just feels like a little, like, marker. I don't know, it just feels very, like, I mean, I guess it's supposed mm. to be, like, the marker of a year passing, but... I don't know. I always get really like introspective or whatever, which can make it fun, but also can definitely make it a little depressing. I would say I would venture to say that New Year's Eve is fun. New Year's Day is depressing, personally. Mm -hmm. If New Year's Day is fun for you, you didn't do New Year's Eve correctly. No, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Right. I do like that it is kind of like a national holiday for people to just be hungover and not go to work, though. Because yeah. um, that's at least like one thing in the whole wide world that the job industry has actually done for workers. They're like, you know what? On this one, we get it. I worked at 4 a.m. on New Year's Day one time. I had somebody drive me. I was so hungover. It was the worst shift of my life. I was about to be like, I wonder you were not still How drunk. How much did you make? Were you doing minimum wage? What, is, what was your hourly wage? Oh, minimum wage. Was this Kroger <laughs> vibe? Ladies and, gentlemen, uh-huh. ladies and gentlemen, that is why we need to raise the minimum wage. Exactly. Yeah. Oh I'm really God. over the New Year New Year's Eve Scrooge phenomenon that's going on where someone like every party I go to, they're always like, I don't really care. It's just another day for me. I set goals all the time. <laughs> oh. like, yeah. Sorry, it's like Kendra. I'm not yeah, I'm not like, all like, be an ignorant bliss yeah. for like one day and believe that we can be better people. Like please. We Absolutely. can be better people. Hot take. Right? Gregory, have you ever made a resolution? <laughs> Gregory, my man, hello? What's that? What's going on? I said, have you ever made a resolution? Oh, yeah. I've made a ton of resolutions. What's, like, your top? Let's see. Uh, I remember my one from last year. It was a three-parter. Oh, this um, is what I needed. Part one <laughs> was finish writing a book. Mm-hmm. Um, Hell yeah. I failed. Uh, the second one was begin the collapse of the current political system. Love it. Oh. Um, <laughs> also failed. And then the third yeah. one, uh, I've kind of changed my tune since, but it was uh, by any means necessary, bring about the end of <laughs> Can I just say I'm obsessed with, with the fact that Gregory's uh, New Year's resolutions just have so much power to them? Yeah. Oh, can, you, can you write my New Year's resolutions? I hate to jump in here, but I do want to say I'm pretty proud of mine. Uh, For the past two years, my New Year's resolution has been to make a citizen's arrest. Hasn't happened yet, but I'm on the lookout. So (laughs) wrongdoers, beware. I've got eagle eyes. Eagle eyes. Trekking, looking for trouble. (laughs) All right, maybe, maybe to wrap up this bits in the tank, we can just make a resolution for for this podcast for the podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> um i feel like my resolution might be to make somebody you know in like cartoons when people snort milk out of their nose <laughs> maybe that's yeah. my resolution. yeah does anyone else have one <laughs> I'm going to start off strong. First episode, I'm going to do the curse word free episode. I'm going to I'm going to refrain oh. from cuss words. Yep. I that does don't not believe have to, you, but I'm That does not I'm have to do with being at my free. parents' house, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyone else? If it ain't broke, Just don't fix it. Time. That too. Um, <laughs> if it, I was gonna say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. By the end of this podcast, I will make a citizen's arrest on someone in this. In this All right. Five I want to finally first. figure out what yes and means. <laughs> <laughs> wow, guys, these are lofty goals, but I feel like it's a fresh year, and I'm excited for it. Let's go on down to Goon River. Well, 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 it appears we are stumbling onto Goon River, one of our favorite games. 
In this game, you will see a story of a town that has never existed before and will never exist again um, through a series of improvised monologues and an improvised newsreel. All of this is completely made up on the spot, except, of course, for the suggestions that we got from you guys on Instagram for a town that doesn't exist. Today's town name is Lamb Dam Dom. So this <laughs> is the story of Lamb Dam Dom. Dom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want? No, she hasn't come around here in forever. Yeah, Julie. <laughs> nah, man. Look, I don't know what you want. I don't know if you caught the sign. No soliciting. Yeah. Well, my name's Jeffrey. Yeah. Last name? <laughs> Porgus. <laughs> <laughs> now, look. When I say Julie hasn't come around here in a while... I mean, I mean a long time. Uh, I mean, if you're willing to find her, go right ahead. Miss that girl. I also have warts. <laughs> Hiya! Welcome to Long Dom Town! I'm Tommy, and I've never had a single wart in my entire life, and I stand by it. I've picked up toads, I've picked up frogs, and there's not a single wart on this body that has come from either one of them. I and I am the oldest in my entire class, and <laughs> even though I am in elementary school, I do like to brag about that because uh, I am proud of my brain. And um, yeah, welcome to the town, and let me know if you have any questions. Oh my god, stop! Are you looking at my warts again? Oh my god. Stop! I literally, I can see you looking at all five of them. Yes, yes, I know there's five. Can you just like look away for like two seconds? Okay. Okay, I just put some makeup on them. Do they look better? You could at least lie, okay? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ugh. Living in Lamb Dom Don, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's always oh my god you have warts oh my god I don't have warts you know what I mean and it is exhausting like I just wish somebody knew me for me did you know that my favorite animal is a flamingo no <laughs> you didn't because you were too busy looking at my warts or that I've never gone ice skating. I really think that if I didn't have all of these warts, I could be a professional ice skater one day. I can see it now. I would win so many awards, and everybody would love me and my not warty face. My mom's always like, always like, Candace, stop trying to do a triple flip. You can't. You have warts. And I'm like, Mom, stop. I hate it here. Uh, really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my name's Fred. Uh, I'm just a local frog. It's been a weird year, though. Uh, <laughs> it started off normal. I would just go and hop around by the local skating rink, uh, see all the nice skaters through it. But uh, one day, I was hanging out with my friend Sh Jeffrey, and he was like, I have this wart. And then, next thing I know, Everyone is blaming me for the warts. I didn't know. I don't know. I guess I didn't learn anything about giving people warts in frog school, and I don't think it was me. Rip. So where are you heading? Oh, that's a good spot. I've heard good things about it there. <laughs> me? I don't know. I just kind of hopped on this train. I don't. I don't really know where it's gonna head. I just had to get out of. Lamb dam dumb. Yeah, whole whole place is crawling with warts. I don't know what's going on. I, I had to get out of there. As soon as this thing takes off, I'll just go wherever the wind or I guess the train takes me. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Jeffrey. <sighs> that loser's always looking for me. Just just 
tell him I don't know tell him I'm dead or something yeah it's Julie just forget it leave me alone Oh, I know you are so jealous of my skates. <laughs> I am Xander the Magnificent, and I love to frolic across the ice. <laughs> Everybody is jealous of my legs and my skates. They are also sharp. I sharpen them every day. All of these people are covered with warts. That is so weird. I just have fun here on this. Everybody is warted. And they can't come be with me because I am beautiful, and they don't know what to do. <laughs> I am on the ice. I am gorgeous. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> what a time to be a dermatologist, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Denny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Doctor Denny, and uh, I can remove warts. You see, there used to be the have and the have nots. Now there's the have warts and the have warts nots. And uh, I just gotta say, uh, I can really bump you up a class in this town. I can make you shine real good. You can even put on a pair of skates, see what happens. I don't know, maybe you'll be a star one day. Whatever. That's Dr. Denny. Here's my card. Hey, my name is Damien. I'm from LA. <laughs> but I came out here because I'm a talent scout, and I heard that this place is wacky as hell. I heard there's warts <laughs> and reality TV. They say that it loves hot people, but what they don't know is that it also loves ugly people. <laughs> Not saying that warts make you ugly. Hey, don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> That's my job with the editing team. But yeah, we're looking for some young talent. We're looking for ice skaters, warty people, sexy people. If you see anyone that's weird, give me a call. I'm, I'm following this lead about this lost, torn romance between this guy named Jeffrey and Julie. Two J's, the audience will eat that shit up. Easy, easy to make a relationshiping name. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, Damien, call me. Brian, uh, I'm Jeffrey's wart. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, it's not very easy. He's always trying to cover me up so I can't even see the outside world. I know he doesn't know I can talk, and I know he knows that I don't even, don't even have a brain, but I just want to live my life like everybody else, but I'm just stuck in the same old wordy spot every single day. If only they all knew that I just, I want to be an actor. I want to be on the movie screen, but no one will ever find me. I'll be stuck under this armpit for ages. <laughs> My name's Brian, and I used to have big dreams, but now I'm a fugitive, changing my name every three hours, moving my location. You, you see, I'm a born and raised lamb damn Dahmer, and um, I always love cooking. Been my dream all my life to open up the greatest fried chicken and banana pudding cafeteria style <laughs> restaurant anywhere anyone's ever seen. But I can't get certification from the health inspector because everyone has warts and they think I'm gonna hire non locals? No. Nah. Lamb Dam Dom's restaurant is coming. Just have to come up with my scheme first. Hello and welcome to News at 11. Today, we're interviewing a local fraud to see his take on what's going down with the warts in town. Uh, Mr. Frog, what could you tell us about all of this? Oh, you know, yeah. I'm a other frog. <laughs> And, uh, listen, blame's being putting on us. We ain't the wart givers. I, I don't know where that rumor started spreading, but it ain't us, all right? So you back off. Back off with those lies. Media. <laughs> Man, say, old timey news at seven. <laughs> oh, looky here. Who's crossing the street? Well, you guessed it, it's your favorite mascot. Listen, 
What do you have to say about the frog spreading rumors? Well, at least that's what I want to say. Except, people don't really like us around here. But I have faith, as the mascot of, uh, Lamb Dam Dom, I think that people are gonna start liking warts around this place. I just feel it. And we are here with one of our famous ice skaters of the area. Um, please tell us, do you think warts are gonna be getting into the way of your performance? Oh, warts will never get in the way of anything I do. Xander the Great is always, always surpassing obstacles. Everything I do just defeats the competition. And in this climate, I, warts are my competition. <laughs> And thank you. That was news at 11 and 7. <laughs> Stay safe, Lam Dam Dam. Welcome to town. See, your train's running fine, apparently. This one I've been living on for the past couple weeks just will not start up, apparently. What are you doing in town? Opening a restaurant? You know, it's going to be impossible to pass a health inspection here, right? This place is crawling with warts and, like, I don't even know what else. Well, good luck with that. Me? Yeah, I'm trying to get out of here, but this thing is not running. <laughs> Just trying to get away from my ex, Jeffrey. Why hasn't he come here? Oh, well, this is the best way of travel when you're running away from an ex with a horrible phobia of trains. <laughs> you know? Figured it was pretty much the only safe place I can be to get away from him. Well, anyways, good luck with your fried banana thing or whatever. Yeah, it's getting real stinky under this armpit. <laughs> I know that Jeffrey's trying to find his ex-girlfriend. He wants to try to make the relationship good again, but it's really distracting me from my dreams and... I don't know if you heard, but there's some guy trying to open up a restaurant, but he doesn't know how to promote it. He, they're saying they're not even going to open it up because of all the warts, but I think he said he wants to start a commercial. I I heard something about that just from Jeffrey talking around the town, and if they need someone for a commercial, then what better person than me? It'll be my first acting gig. Well, why would they want a wart? In this stupid, wartless town. <laughs> well, I guess we'll see what happens. Maybe I can figure out a way to speak to Jeffrey for the very first time. Well, guess I'll let you know. The show must go on. <laughs> I've made a rather horrifying discovery today. Um, uh, you know... Mr. Porgus, uh, Jeffrey, came in for a very routine procedure. But, um, <laughs> something went very off the walls here. You see, I, I opened up the bandage on his armpit, and, uh, that little wart sang on my own to me from <laughs> Les Miserables. And I just don't know what to say, because I, I did cry, my, my eyes did well up with tears, and I'm not even a musical guy. So uh, I put down my um, surgical exacto knife and I'm reconsidering my career. But uh, I don't know if Jeffrey heard it. And if he didn't, <laughs> he's got a star on his hands and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> or should I say in his pits? Damn, what a day. <laughs> Lousy freaking doctor doesn't even want to do the procedure. I don't know what she's on about, but I see her just well up with tears. Put down the knife. Whatever. Anyways, heading to my local uh, lamp post. Checking out the bulletins that are posted there. I see one that says talent scout. Is that the same as like a bounty hunter? <laughs> Anyways, maybe they can find Julie. You know, I kind of heard some rumors she was maybe by the, uh, uh trains. 
Hey, but you know, I ain't going anywhere near there. Uh-uh. Yeah, let me call up this talent scout. Beep boop. Hey, yo. <laughs> I got a job for you, talent scout. Yeah. Need you to check out these trains. See if my girl's there. Yeah, she's whack for some reason. <laughs> yep. I'm from New York. And I'm just living in lamb damn dom. And I gotta hit up my buddy Fred the Frog. I mean... <laughs> This ward's getting stinky. And I hear Xander's taking my turf. Look, I know Fred has been upset lately because they turned all the frogs' pond into an ice skating rink. Yeah, messed up. I know. Let me go check with him. Did somebody say talent? <laughs> I landed in triple <laughs> axle this morning. Absolutely stunning. I'm so good. I've got to change my name. It is Xander the Magnificent. Oh, it just doesn't roll off the tongue. Oh, I see there is somebody for some reality show. I need I need to be on it. Uh, fuck Tonya Harding. I, Xander <laughs> the Magnificent. Oh. Of course, as soon as I heard that Xander was here and there was a talent scout, Oh my god, it's my time! It's my big break! <laughs> I put on as much makeup as I could and ran to Xander's door. Knock on it as hard as I could, and there he was! All in his glory. Six foot five. Slender. Oh, beautiful. And of course, he had on his skates that he always wears and never takes off. And of course, not a single wart on his face. I fell to my knees, crying, begging him to, to tutor me, mentor me, please, please, Xander, please, teach me your ways, I want to be a skater, and he looked down at me, and he just spit in my face, <laughs> and of course, his immaculate spit rubbed off all of my makeup, and revealing my warts, all five of them, oh my god. I was ashamed. <laughs> and I got up and ran away. And as I ran away, I tried to jump a fence. <laughs> and he saw me jump it and he was like, wait, wait, what is your name? I told him Candace. <clears throat> he said, maybe there's hope for you yet. Well, 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 uh, this place is fucking epic. <laughs> uh, usually talent scouts get the old schmoozing, but these motherfuckers are warty and obsessed with me, and uh, I can't blame them. First of all, there's this girl, Candace, who at first glance seems like a warty, scary freak, but she talks like she's writing a, wa a Wattpad thing. <laughs> She could be a great narrator if she's not good at anything else. I mean, I've only seen her walking around. Maybe she has another talent, but that Sander guy, he seems like a natural, but uh, I don't know. Is it too expected? Uh, whatever. So I'm walking down the street thinking all these things, right? And then this uh, weird guy from New York calls me, tells me to go to the train station. Guess what? I'm plopped right in the middle of that effing love issue. You know, the Jer Julie, Jeremy, Jeffrey, what are their names? Who cares? They're from this small town. We can rewrite it in post. So I go to the train. I see this girl. And it's just so idyllic. She looks like we Reese Witherspoon in that one movie where she goes on a long walk through the wilderness. And I'm like, all right, perfect. We got to get this girl back over. So I'm talking to her. And I'm like, what is the problem between you and this guy what can we do to rectify this broken heart and she's all secretive i'm like okay gold pot gold jackpot money in the bank <laughs> 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 okay we got a secret and she's like if i told you what jeffrey did to me you might be upset at him but if i told you what jeffrey did to this whole town you'd be disgusted and so i'm like okay this jeffrey guy seems like he caused something big so i give her my card and i'm like hey you look just like reese witherspoon it's gonna be fine and i'm hoping she'll come on in but as for the others i'm still looking for that special someone the voice of the people you know what i mean 
Well, it's 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 me, the restauranteur. My name's Ralphie, but <laughs> you know that. Um. Well, good news. I finally found a location for my restaurant, and I'm so excited. I can just pop a wart. It's um. <laughs> See, I'm I'm still not exactly approved, so I had to find somewhere that you know is a little down low. Um, but it's got character. It's um, a cave in a hill by the train tracks, a little bit out of town, a little damp and wet. But oh, <laughs> who am I kidding? No one's gonna find this restaurant, not even. Well, you know, the smell of fried chicken and banana pudding doesn't travel more than 800 meters. So, <laughs> I gotta get the word out somehow. You know, I'd love to have the great Xander do a commercial. They're quite a fellow, but... Oh, that would alert me. That would that would put my name everywhere. The health department would... It shut me down. No. I need someone with acting chops. But someone, you know, who's used to hiding in damp, smelly places. <laughs> so where am I going to find someone like that? And since that's such a desirable trait, um, I hope there wouldn't be any competition in recruiting them. Hey! Hey, you! My eyes are down here! <sighs> People always overlook me in this town. <sighs> it's been a rough, rough week. I just found out that they're, uh, they're freezing my pond to make another ice rink, which is crazy, because there's already been 47 ice rinks <laughs> in this town. <laughs> right? <sighs> All because they think we are the ones that gave them warts, but that's simply not the truth. None of them, I haven't, nor has any of my frog brethren and sisters given anyone a wart. We haven't even seen warts. Something's up, man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Rip. <sighs> my ice, my, they took our pond, and now the competition's been cleared in the, the ice skating games. Only people without warts are going to do well. <sighs> and they got that new ring. That's crazy. Luckily, the only thing keeping me going is my friend Steven. Or my friend Jeffrey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't blame me at all for giving him those warts. He understood. I'd never do such a thing. Right? Uh, just a normal day, you know? I was just bored during recess, just twiddling my thumbs, looking at the toddlers walking around me. But then, I saw a random pair of ice skates and this abandoned looking pond that was obviously frozen over because it was winter time. <laughs> and I just tried them on. And I guess I'm a natural or something, but I definitely have to enter in competitions or because I did a double black backflip 180 twist seamlessly. I thought I could probably even beat that bitch Candace. <laughs> and don't even get me started on Xander the Great. I definitely probably could beat him too. But um I guess I'm not level competition because I don't have warts or something, but I've been talking to the local frog, Fred, and I'm trying to get I'm trying to get in touch with him so he could maybe transfer me some warts, but so people could finally take me seriously, but uh I don't know, he's telling me that warts don't come from frogs. Total mind twist. I I have no idea what's happening. I just I just want some warts so I can win this ice skating competition. I looked in the mirror this morning, and on my right thigh, there was a wart. I have no idea how it got there, but I simply cannot go on. It's... 
you know, nobody is going to see it, but... And, you know, subtracting any number from infinity, it really doesn't matter. So when you take a little <laughs> bit away from perfection, I guess it wouldn't matter, but for me it does. So I think it's time I change my name to something else. Xander, the deceased. <laughs> I leave my price <laughs> to Candace. Knock that bitch Tommy out. I heard him blaspheme my name from miles away. Dr. Denny? <laughs> I don't go by that name anymore. No. Just Denny now. It's actually uh, Davis Denny, in case you're wondering. Yeah, uh, I'm heading out of land and Dom. Just got to be a bit too much for me. Uh, the moral repercussions of the things that were happening there I just could no longer ignore. You know, ice skating culture? <laughs> It breeds a lot of hate, and uh, when you start removing warts, sometimes you just don't know where to stop. Sometimes you remove all the humanity along with it. So uh, I got the first train out of town. I heard that uh, Jeffrey Porges was going to make some sort of announcement, but uh, I don't care to know. I'm just going to be a wanderer from now on. <laughs> Make my money the old-fashioned way. I'm gonna sing on my own on street <laughs> So I'm there talking to Freddy, right? Yeah. And I get the call from Damien. Damien says, hey, look, you know, I think you got something to do with these warts. I found your girl, Julie. She by the train. <gasps> train. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's <freaking> me out. <laughs> the train. Listen. <laughs> We are, uh, you know, 800 meters from that weird cave by the train. And I, uh, smell something. Puts away all my fears of the train, and I just go to that smell, and... Here we have this weird-looking restaurant, and in front of it... A pond frozen over! So I'm like, yo, what's going on? <laughs> going on! I see the train. I know Julie's there. Man. So anyways, they think that I spread the warts? They're wrong. I know why this pond was frozen over. Yeah, because Tommy's the one that spread the warts. Underneath this pond is his collection of warts. And from there, they spread. And you know what? I'm going to show everyone by skating on these- Whoa, whoa, I'm skating on my armpit. My wart skating. What am I doing? <laughs> it's doing show tunes now. Yo. Oh my gosh. Uh. So anyways, <laughs> we opened up a hole in the pond, exposed Tommy for his lies, and now I'm on the train with Julie, and we're heading to LA. It wasn't me that got on the train. It was my wart. So this couple, right? <laughs> I'm trying everything I can to get them together. And get this, it wasn't even a love story all along. It was a love triangle, okay? Julie, the little Reese Witherspoon starlet, this guy, Jeffrey, who has a confusing as hell accent, <laughs> and enter it through the side wing, the third contestant, Jeffrey's little wart. Okay, if anyone was due for the screen, it's this little motherfucker. He's jumping on the ice, <laughs> he's exposing shit. Then he pulls this, this guy onto the train, confessing to jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, called her jewelry, that was hilarious. Um, he confesses to Julie, he never forgot all those nights together. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, what the hell's going on here? But then I realized Julie was cheating on Jeffrey with his wart in his sleep. And I'm like, oh, she hates this Jeffrey guy because he was trying to get rid of his wart, which was her true love of his life, which is also problematic. I mean, she shouldn't have put all the blame on him. Blah, 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 blah. 
you know, if you want the whole story, just tune in to to the Style Network, okay? Next <laughs> month, okay? It's gonna be epic. I'm on the train. It is a little awkward because that ward is still on that guy, but I'm as happy as a clam. Goodbye to this place, but thank you for the content. I finally got the attention of my owner, Jeffrey. And I even found a talent scout on the train. But I saw Julie there. <laughs> which, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Jeffrey started talking about this quote-unquote cheating. And how I was sleeping with Julie. I'm only a war. <laughs> I didn't know that sleeping with someone was bad. I mean, <laughs> I just like to snuggle up to someone and have a good <laughs> night. But guess what? That scored me a spot on reality TV. Who knew that someone could cheat with a wart? I can't <laughs> believe how my life has ended up. So, I'm with <laughs> I'm here with Jeffrey and Julie, and we might be on our way to LA. <laughs> I guess I could finally say that I'm on my own. <laughs> hey, it's uh, me, uh, Tony. You know me. And, um, well, I'm in jail. Health inspector got me. But thankfully, it wasn't because of the wars. You see, I couldn't think of any spokesperson to do in a commercial that would be comfortable in a small, wet, dark, stinky place. I raked my mind and I, I couldn't think of any. So I thought, well, I guess I'm gonna have to bring my fried chicken and banana pudding to the people. Well, so I thought I'll sell them at the ice skating uh, match. And so I had to think up a plan and I realized that, you know, I can't openly sell this because I'll get in trouble with the health inspector. But if I, um, like, pretend like I'm vomiting onto <laughs> someone, I could replace the vomit with banana pudding. And then when I offer to clean up, they'll shake my hand, thank you. And when I shake their hand, I'll have a chicken thigh in there that I'll pass off. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll look like any normal interaction. So I was doing it, and you know, it was looking pretty realistic. Uh, you know, the banana bits out of the chunk. Um, and it was great. I made literally like 500 bucks that <laughs> night. And then the next morning, I, um, the health inspector knocked up and said, were you vomiting on, on, on people at the game? And I was like, um, yeah. <laughs> and they took me to jail. But before that, oh, what an idiot. I saw that armpit wart on TV and I thought, oh, that would have been my spokesperson, but I'm in jail, so no restaurant. <laughs> I. I lost. I worked so hard. I did exactly what Xander would have done. I even landed the triple axel. I did it in his gates. I had to avenge him. And I got that fucking, fucking Tommy guy. I worked so hard. And they still gave the medal to him. And you know what they said? They said, Wow, Tommy, your skin looks so smooth. <laughs> it was, there was just so much going on. There was a guy vomiting everywhere. He said his name was like Brittany. <laughs> so confused. And then I just went into a rage. I saw red and I heard a voice. Five voices to be exact. And they said, Candace, kill him, Candace. <laughs> <laughs> Candace, 
kill him. And I was like, who is that? And they were like, it's us. Your warts. <laughs> Avenge Xander, Candace. Avenge him. <laughs> Do it. Then you'll be famous. You'll be famous, Candace. I didn't even know my warts could talk, but... I did what any sane person would do. I took Xander's skates so pristine and glorious like him. And I struck Tommy down. I will be the best skater in Lamb Dam Dom. I will be the best skater. And everybody will remember Candace and all of my words. <laughs> yeah, so my week did get worse. <laughs> a lot worse. <laughs> it's been crazy, right? Uh, so, to start with, my pond is gone, so I have no place to live. My best friend Jeffrey left, so I have no friends. And then someone started puking on me. He didn't even see me down here. It was awful. But that's okay. I'm just gonna finish, you know watching this skating match and then I'm gonna hop on over to my lady's house. I can't wait. Her pond has not been frozen over, so it's gonna be a wild hop around, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh! What's that? What's that girl girl doing with those skates? Oh! Oh my Oh my god! Watch out! Watch out! Hurry! Rit! Rit! Here. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was a coincidence that I just happened to be the only one in this town with no warts, huh? It just so seems that I could be the one <laughs> betrayed this entire town, whatever, whatever. But you know why I did it. Warts are inherently ugly. And as the most beautiful person in this town, there's no way that anyone else could have beaten me in this goddamn race. Until that bitch Candace decided to chase me around with freaking Xander's ice skates like a goddamn maniac. <laughs> it's fine though. I ran away. Barely. She was right there, right behind me the whole time. Just running right after me. I made her to run right by the caves within 800 meters just so she could smell the nasty ass smell and I made sure to bring my I made sure to bring my gas mask so she <laughs> died a little bit before right before I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess this is the start of a brand new life for me. I guess all my scheming with Tommy ended up working out. What? Oh. Yeah. I helped Tommy spread boards to the town. <laughs> and... Oh. Yeah, I set up Jeffrey for it. What was I supposed to do? I mean... Ryan is... The hottest, most passionate, <laughs> best actor and most heart-wrenching cover of On My Own I've ever heard in my damn life. <laughs> How was I supposed to pass that up? I knew I had to do something drastic to, to send him a message before I fled. So I talked to Tommy about spreading warts to the whole town and it worked for him and it made a big splash and it would have let Brian know that even if I was leaving, I was still thinking about it. But. I guess it all worked out for the better, because now we're here on this train. I mean, yeah, Jeffrey's still here, and he's the worst, but... <laughs> I think we're gonna maybe be okay. <laughs> here we come, L.A. Bye, Lamb Dam Dom. Wow, guys. Um, Lamb Dam Dom is certainly a wild place. I feel like if we learned anything from that long form, it's that if you want to go to Hollywood, have a torrid affair with a wart, um, and otherwise just keep skating, you know, until you can't skate no more. 
<laughs> um, we're on to our final section of our show where you, our lovely fans, write to us in your time of need and we help you out because we'd love nothing more than for you to live forever in eternal happiness. Uh, so we asked you guys on Instagram if you had any advice um, you needed from us. And uh, we have two lovely people that wrote in to us and we're going to have our fish give you some advice and we're going to decide who gave you the best advice. You'll get it. No worries. So our first uh, person writing in says, how do I get my toddler to sleep through the night? That is from Tired daddy And we're going to have Stephen and Gregory comment on this and give you some advice. Stephen or Greg, start off whenever you want. Hey, hey, hey. It's Stephen and Gregory. If you haven't heard, we have a long time running rivalry when it comes to advice giving. Uh, so I flipped a coin in my head and um, I'm ready for Greg to go whenever or me. The quarter kind of, you know, fell on. All right, Stephen, middle. how about how about you go first? <laughs> so how do I get my toddler to sleep through the night? Well, tired daddy -o. I'm really glad you asked because I was thinking about this the other night. Um, not a father. Um, maybe one day. But I was just thinking because I have a hard time going to sleep sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you can count on counting sheep. Don't know if your toddler would want to do that because sheep are not in these days. What's in these days? Thank you for asking. Really appreciate it. Um, fruit snacks, gushers, candy, toddlers, love it. Now, you have to tell them, you know, no sugar before bed. You know, they're going to be sad. Oh, poor toddlers. It's okay. You have them counting, you know, one gusher, two fruit snacks. Oh, here comes a shark gummy swimming over. Um, that's three, you know, they will be salivating at the mouth, wanting to just get to sleep because they know the next morning their sugar count is back down to zero. You have to install the rule, though, of no sugar before bedtime. I think that's common. I don't want to impose that on anyone that hasn't been doing that. You know, I'm not going to say you're a bad parent or not, but... It's important for this piece of advice that you have that in place so that they can look forward to eating more sugar the next day. Wow. A very political stance on counting your macros from Stephen Greenwald. Gregory, what say you? Uh, well, this is, uh, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, uh, or I imagine it was when I was younger. Um, I don't even know a toddler right now, um, but I, you know I can picture it in my mind's eye, uh, Mr. Tired Daddyo, uh, this this little kid just having the worst time going to bed. And um, I think I've devised a pretty good solution that not only gets uh, your child to sleep, gets you to sleep, and it uh, helps the environment. So. If you're anything like me, you will have piles of rather my parents. If you 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 probably have piles and piles of old textbooks lying around from your days in high school or your days in college. And you think to yourself, ah, there's some useful information in here. I'll use it one day. Spoiler alert, you never will. <laughs> you're not gonna open that biology book up ever again. No, just forget about it. Nuh uh. History of, of, you know, 1970 to, to today. What? You're, let's be honest. No one reads textbooks again. So what you do is you take one of these old textbooks and you just, as we all know, toddlers love stories. You read them the textbook because it, it makes you tired. It makes the kid tired. You'll probably fall asleep before they do. And once that happens, you don't even have to worry about whether they're asleep or not. <laughs> you know, at some point, it's, well, hey, if you can't tell that they're awake, <laughs> it's no longer your problem. 
So that that's the the main takeaway that I have to uh, to offer is just make sure you fall asleep first, and uh, you'll figure it out. Wow, two very strong pieces of advice, but we're here to give you the very best one, Sam. Which one are you leaning towards? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, parents are. Uh, well, my parents are a personal hero of mine. You know, parents, I think, in general are heroes. And um, uh, uh, people, parents are humans, and humans get tired a lot, especially parents. So, Gregory, since you think that the parents get to go to sleep first, I think that sounds like a really great plan. And I say screw the toddler, because the parents are the real heroes here. Wow, children are our future down the toilet. Um, Adam, can you give me your, your, your enlightenment about this? Yes. So Stephen's answer was cute. (laughs) (laughs) He was overlooking one very important thing and that's juvenile diabetes. Not all kids can have sugar like that. And (laughs) nobody is allergic to textbooks. So I'm going to have to go with Gregory. Wow, uh, the real issues are coming forward. Natisha, please help me out with this one. Honestly, I kind of am leading towards Steven just because if you start them off young by counting, not their calories or like macro, whatever nutrients, but I definitely think that counting in, in itself is just kind of a good thing to start them off young. So I kind of am on Steven's side. All right, I'm feeling some ambiguity. Haley, can you clear this up for me last? Let's get one more fish on this. Haley, please. Haley, you're always the one that I can count on. Thank you, babe. I'm honestly <laughs> obsessed with the idea of, like, just filling a child's head with just high-level academia. <laughs> like, I want that kid to just show up in school and just be like, dichotomy, juxtaposition. <laughs> uranium plutonium like i think that's the funniest shit in the world and um it's also just reminds me of like you know those bait like those in utero babies or (laughs) you know babies in the womb Mm -hmm. where they like when they put like headphones on the belly yeah (laughs) it's you're just kind of like prepping the kid for a a life of just being a (laughs) know-it-all and i love that so i gotta get (laughs) Gregory on this one because I would love a kid to just look at me and be like, just say some some whack high level shit. <laughs> well, tired daddyo, it seems like we're leaning towards Gregory's advice on this one. But at the end of the day, if you're still torn, you can always print out a transcript of a Gushers commercial and read that to him instead. But we're going to move on to another person begging for advice from us. And we're going to have Hannah McKegg and Mary give this person some advice. Uh, this person writes, what is the easiest thing that I can do to be hotter from lukewarm, lonely boy, Hannah, Mary, either of you have some immediate thoughts on this? You I know, do. Oh, you can go ahead. Oh, no, no, you go, you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Girls, one at a time. <laughs> we just have a lot of feelings about this one. I think. We're sorry that we're such, so good at helping people. We're it's just hard. really good advice givers. <laughs> no, this is what I needed. Um, so Personally, I was actually just talking with my friend about this. Um, It's kind of a phenomenon. We're here on this college campus. We've been locked up raw all winter for all year, really, if you think about. (laughs) Yeah, locked up raw. That's a thing people say. Whatever. Um, (laughs) Anyways, I'm not going to have to explain it. Whatever. Um, We've been locked up for the winter. We've been locked up from quarantine. We haven't seen people in like a year. So when you go outside and you see anyone, you're like, oh, wow, people. And suddenly everyone is so hot. Mm. So my best advice to you is literally to just go outside and make eye contact with people. And if you are in the right place at the right time, people are going to be receptive and they are going to just think you are the bee's knees. So that's pretty much my two cents. Simple but effective. Hannah McKegg, do you have a counter argument? Yeah, yeah, I have a, a counter argument. First off, I just want to start by saying 
I'm so glad you asked, lukewarm, lonely boy, because I needed to think about this because I've never had to ask this question to myself before. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And after doing thorough research, you know, reading books, Wikipedia, Facebook, I think I've come up with a pretty concrete method. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into a medium-sized forest, right? (laughs) And you're going to get grass. And not like typical grass, but the grass that's kind of softer than your typical grass, you know? And you're just going to take an old-fashioned mortar and pestle, and you're going to grind that baby up, right? Grind it. Mm -hmm. You're going to take that mix. You're going to put a little uh, chopped garlic and everything but the bagel seasoning, and you're just going (laughs) to spray it down those honking legs you got, you know? Just all the way down, right? And let it sit there and just marinate you like a slab of meat for like 20 (laughs) minutes. Right? That's the exfoliation portion. Next, you're going to take some hot sauce. Layer it. That's the name of the game. That's actually going to burn off most of your skin. Right? (laughs) Then you take that cold swim creamery rewards card you've been hiding away in that wallet. And you just... (laughs) That's the sound of you scraping it off your body. Right? (laughs) gentle and then you're gonna look at yourself in the mirror you're gonna give yourself five positive affirmations you're gonna listen to freak nasty by megan the stallion and you're <laughs> that oh. damn dope door lukewarm lonely boy that's all i rest my case wow 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 two guppies with big big brains uh i think <laughs> when we're deciding who has the better advice i need to go to another guppy hannah santo what's your thoughts on this Yeah, you know, uh, this advice is coming from a lukewarm, lonely boy. Mm -hmm. And he's in luck because I'm a smoking hot social man. (laughs) And I think, (laughs) but here's the thing I I wasn't always smoking hot. Everyone's a little bit ugly, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. all of us are just a little (laughs) bit ugly. And what I think. I think people are thinking too hard about it, though. We have to accept that we're all just a a little bit ugly. And if we all accept that, then we can find a way to make our ugly hot. You know what I mean? And so I feel like Mary kind of had a better take on it. You can't think about it too much. You kind of just have to live through life day by day and just talk to people a little bit. Hear their experiences. Be like, you're ugly. And it's be like, oh, <laughs> I'm ugly too. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go <laughs> with Mary. <laughs> wow, eloquent as ever. Um, Audrey, how are you feeling about this? You know, uh, Hannah M really real me in right from the beginning. Because when she was saying, find that grass. And she was saying, grind it up with a mortar and pestle. I was right there along with her, thought she might smoke it, but you know what? She took it a different way that I also just love. Well-seasoned. That brings the heat. So I actually, I'm with Hannah McKay on this one. And uh, Carly, I was absolutely dying to know what you thought about it. Oh, me? Little old me? Well, I, I, I did have some thoughts on this, let me say. Um... I'm a big fan of walking, just like Mary suggested, but I'm also, little known fact, a waitress. I never talk about this with anybody, (laughs) Um, but I do work at a restaurant, and I am a fan of food, beer, and casual conversation. I'm just kind of a fun girl. Um, So when (laughs) Hannah McKegg came out here and she brought in everything but the bagel seasoning and hot sauce, I was like, listen... Is this overkill? But then I thought, nothing is complete. No dish without the garnish. And I thought, that's a metaphor for us as humans, right? <laughs> Hannah, Hannah Santos said it. You know, we're all a little bit ugly. But I think mm-hmm. what's missing from Mary's, oh. Mary's uh, you know, argument is that what do you do to a dish that looks a little ugly? Mashed potatoes. Pwah! Put some parsley on top or some shit. You know, uh, mm. a, 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 a turkey, like put some gravy on there. And so that's what I think 
I think it's a little bit of both. And what Hannah McKegg is bringing just finishes off that dish perfectly so that I can come to the table and say, bon appetit. You know what I mean? Very true. Very but again, true. True. again, <laughs> I feel like we need to go back to Haley because oh, not to say it, not to say, oh, I know I'm always bringing you in the mix like this. It's embarrassing, oh. but Haley, I just, you just make me feel calm, you know? <laughs> oh, God. Hey, everybody, let me tell you something. When it comes to being hot, it's all about as long as you think that you're hot, you're hot. All right. As long as you look in the mirror and you're like, damn, I am hot, then you are hot. Mm. You know? And so I'm going to be controversial. I'm going to be like these both Mary and Hannah had great points. Let's not let's how about we mix them together? You know, mm. like. You can go outside and be like, damn, I really am somebody's cup of tea. Everybody out here is hot. Mary's right. It's very warm outside. I go outside. I see so many people in short shorts. And I'm like, damn, I need to touch some grass. Right. And then Amen. you got Hannah's point. Thank you. You got Hannah's point <laughs> where it's like, doll yourself up. Put yourself, put on some everything but all over you, you know, mm -hmm. and listen to your Megan and feel yourself. So to that, I say both of these beautiful women are both hot and they both know what the hell they're talking about. And to lukewarm lonely boy, you are hot. Wow. Uh, wow. You get, that was really you wholesome. Get an you get an advice. You get an advice. Mm -hmm. Everybody's hot. <laughs> this is amazing. Tired daddy, a lukewarm lonely boy. I hope we helped you. And um, congratulations on being the first of many to get advice from our talented, talented guppies. Guys, this was Bits in the Tank. As always, we're so happy to be talking to you. We miss your guts, but we're happy to be talking to you through Spotify and many other platforms. But for now, just uh, give yourself in your own home a round of applause for our guppies because they are here to stay and they're extremely talented. We love them so goddamn much. More of them. Keep following Fishbowl Improv on all social media and stay tuned for what's coming from the bowl, okay? Don't forget to feed your fish. Uh, this has been Fishbowl Improv. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. See you. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> bye, Craig. Bye, Craig. Bye, Craig. Hi, Craig. Craig. See you, Craig. See you, Craigie boy. <laughs> <laughs>